Okay, now that we've got all our connections made, what we've got here is our RS-485 connector we talked about prior. Uh, what we've done is we've go ahead and connected it. You've got two sets of contacts like we talked about earlier. You've got an RSA and an RSB, and then you've got another set of RSA and an RSB connectors. It doesn't matter which ones you use. Uh, what you've done, is, what we've done here is we've gone ahead and plugged this into our laptop. If you'll follow these wires up, you'll notice our RS4 USB to RS-485 connector already connected, and our EC parameter software already connected and, and open, ready to go. Now what we're going to do, now that the motor is off, it has power going to it, but we've enabled it off. Uh, you have to do that prior to running this motor uh, to be able to monitor it with this connector. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and push connect. Now it's showing connected. It's showing connected here, giving us all of our options here. Now what we'll do is we'll slowly start to go over our EC parameter software. As you can see, we're already still connected. You got your you can send parameters to the motor if you create them. You can save them here, open and close loop control, and any of the alarm statuses. And what you got up here is your control section that we're currently in. Then you've got a monitor section, which we'll show you real quick. Here, it's just a graph, shows you the RPMs, uh, the time, your enable, which we've got it currently off, any alarms that may happen. Uh, it shows you the set point, uh, RPMs, where now we're sitting at about 690 RPMs, uh, and the actual RPMs of the motor, which right now are zero. What we're going to do now is go ahead and turn the fan on. The, it, right now it's at open loop control, so I'll be able to control the speed with the potentiometer. You'll notice a green line and a yellow line. Green line being our set point here at 690 something RPMs. Uh, and then you've got the actual fan speed. Uh, it was off, and now it's spinning back up to speed. And what it'll do is it'll ramp up until it gets to the same one, and it'll balance out. And you'll notice the difference in RPMs here. Again, the light is on, no alarms, everything's running just fine. Now what I'll do is I'll be able to control the RPMs again with the potentiometer. So as I ramp up the potentiometer, you notice the green line getting a little bit higher. RPMs are climbing. Fan also climbs, balances back out, you can notice the RPMs there. And we'll turn it back down. Again you can see set point goes down, motor follows. Now what we'll do next is we'll go back into our control section here and we'll show you how to run this in open and closed loop. So what you want to do is now that you've got your potentiometer, you've got your enable switch, you've also got your pressure sensor or your humidity sensor, which would be your other control, now you can operate this in closed loop. Now what you do is you click closed loop, and you hit OK. The fan will stop, reset, and then open back up. Now we'll go back to the monitor section here. Now you've got three sets of controls. Still got your speed, You've got your set point, which right now we're running about 33%, and you've got your signal set point, which being your differential pressure switch in our in our case here, and that's indicated here by the red line. Now the damper on our on our setup right now is fully open, so what you're reading is the pressure difference between the inlet area and the inlet cone. So everything balances out, everything will get to where it needs to be. Now we were running before at about 690 RPMs in open loop. Now that we're in closed loop. It's taking the differential pressure, and now to maintain that same RPM that we wanted it to do, the airflow that we were getting, it needs to run at 1560 RPMs. So what we'll do is we're going to close the damper all the way. We'll shut the damper completely off so there's no airflow going into the motor. So you'll notice pressure drops. Set point of the RPM stays the same. This is where we want it. So the fan's going to ramp up to compensate for the lack of airflow. It'll only run at 100%. Once it's run at 100%, 25, 50 or so RPMs, it's all it's going to do. And we'll open it back up. You'll notice the airflow difference here. And the fan will slowly start to ramp back down. You'd find something like this if your filters were completely clogged or uh, your coil was dirty. Uh, and you'll notice here as everything starts to balance back out. 
And what's nice about this is you'll be able to monitor it remotely. Uh, so you can have this computer set up in an office somewhere uh, and have an EC fan in a rooftop system or a VAV box. And you'll be able to tell if your filters are ever dirty, so you'll be able to change them in time. Uh, you can tell if your coil's dirty. We'll just watch it here for a minute. And you can close this program, even with a closed loop, and it will stay in closed loop. If you want it to go back into open loop, you have to tell it to go back into open loop controls. Again, the man, fan will stop, reset, and then start back up. Uh, you see any alarms, you'll see. Uh, it'll show you anything, whether it has a, an internal failure, a, a high temperature alarm, anything that would cause the motor to fail. Uh, whether it be a power loss, it'll tell you there uh, of any kind of uh, failures. Uh, again, the parameter software. We also have up here in extras. Uh, you can update this internet uh, via the internet, change the language if you want, and there's a couple of options here. Uh, mainly, one of is change your connections on your USB. Should always be at zero one, so we don't want to change that. And that is the basic intro to the EC Fans software open and closed loop control.